Hello everybody and welcome back to another weekly recap. This is week number 36, so thanks for tuning in. In the weekly recap, I like to go over any content changes, information related to the community, uh, the Q&A when it's not uh, taken down. So this week we received the PvP improvements that were polled a few weeks ago. On top of that, we have a dev blog for the new Forthos Dungeon, which will be an expansion to the Host City's House rework that came out uh, a few weeks ago now. Now there was a Q&A this week, but unfortunately I didn't watch it live and the VOD has been taken down. And I believe the reason for that is someone leaked one of the moderator's real name. I have no confirmation of that, but either way, unfortunately, no Q&A recap as I don't have the information. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and let's get started. So to start off here, let's talk about the update that was released today and that was the PvP improvements and World 45 changes. Uh, these titles are always so boring. But anyway, we did receive some of the PvP changes that were polled a few weeks ago and passed. Now we didn't get all of them, but here are the PvP improvements. First up here, you can use a looting bag in PvP worlds. However, only in certain locations. You can use it in Varrock, uh, the Lumbridge area, Camelot in Sears, uh, in the Edgeville area, Remington, the Castle Wars entrance, and the Duel Arena entrance. So only popular PvP areas have been added. Everywhere else, the looting bag will not work. There is now a timer that will tell you how long until your tele block will expire. There will be two additional messages, one when you're under 30 seconds left and one when your tele block has expired. One thing I'm kind of excited about is the tier 10 emblems are now tradable. I went and checked, they're currently worth around 2.3 mil, but they are now tradable on the Grand Exchange. Now, really interesting change here to combat emblem farming. The bounty hunter world is now limited to players with 300 plus total level and 25 hours of game time i think this is an amazing change really simple but i think it'll help out a ton as a lot of those bounty hunter bots were extremely low level and there's quite a number of accounts you need to do this to really set up a bounty hunter farm so i think putting a total level requirement on it is a good idea i think you could even stretch this to be a little higher but i think 300 total level is a great start so here we have the hp orb change the orb will now have a colored background which changes colors if the player is poisoned envenomed, diseased, or a combination of the two. And on top of that, there are a few different dead man mode changes. For example, new players will now have a 12 hour protection timer instead of only six. New players will also unlock the following quests and their prerequisites. You get Dragon Slayer, Animal Magnetism, Monkey Madness, and a few other quests to get the quest point total like Romeo and Juliet, Goblin Diplomacy, and Prince Alley Rescue. And one other thing worth mentioning, I suppose, is Jagex is running the summer special now. So if you have quite a few accounts or looking to get a discount on membership, now is the time to do so. You'll get three months of membership for the price of two. So it'll be like $7.99 instead of $11.99 or something like that. Okay, so now moving on to the piece of content I am actually now really excited for. And that is the Forthos Dungeon. There's something about kind of mid-tier content that really appeals to me. Maybe it's because I'm a noob. Yeah, yeah, that's probably it. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited for it. Kind of came out of nowhere. But the Forthos Dungeon is going to be an expansion to the Host City's House rework. I really like what's going on here so far. So first up here, there's a quick little map that's showing an overview of the dungeon. I think this poll blog has been fleshed out more than others. I really understand what is being added, how many of each monster, exactly how strong they're going to be. So I really like how expansive the dev blog is. So the Forthos Dungeon is going to be found below the Forthos Ruins, which will be a new area. There are going to be quite a few different monsters and NPCs in the dungeon. There's a focus on red spider eggs for whatever reason. I guess they're kind of hard to obtain for Iron Man, so there's going to be quite a few different ways to obtain uh, herb lore ingredients, specifically the red spider egg. First up here, there's going to be a spider's den, which will have level 75 combat spiders. They'll be assignable as a slayer task from Konar, although I'm assuming you could probably kill them on a regular spider task as well. There will be spawns of 10 red eggs at once, and will be a good alternative to collecting them in Edgeville. There's going to be a grubby chest, which I think is going to be kind of similar to a muddy chest or a crystal chest or something like that. The keys may be tradable, I'm not quite sure. The grubby keys will be uncommonly dropped by creatures throughout the dungeon, and the supplies and treasure from the chest will be around 40,000 to 50,000 GP in value. And it says the supplies will help you survive in the dungeon, so they're probably food items, prayer potions, something like that. There's also going to be a new mini quest throughout the dungeon. There will be some books littered throughout it and a mini quest that you can complete after. There's actually going to be a small tanning stall in the chamber. Now this is kind of interesting as there are dragons down there. Now it's going to cost a lot more to use the tannery, but theoretically you could bring a needle and thread. You could kill the red dragons, use him to tan the hide and get crafting experience and drop the hides, which actually could be kind of a viable training method, or at least kind of unique. The amount of money it'll cost for him to tan the hides 
actually can be reduced by completing the Karenda and Kebos achievement diary. And also nearby, there's going to be a bone burner in the room, which will give three times the experience that you would get regularly from burying, which is going to be worse than the Gilded Altar or the Chaos Altar, but it's right beside the dragons, which means that once again, you could go ahead and bury the bones there, tan the hides, and stay at Red Dragons indefinitely if you wanted. I would be very surprised if this was actually efficient, but it does sound kind of cool to myself. So like I was mentioning, there's going to be some red dragons. There's going to be six red dragons in the room with five baby red dragons. There is a shortcut to get here that will require 75 agility, but you should be able to walk here normally. On top of that, there is undead druids, which will be kind of an upgraded version of chaos druids. They will drop more herbs than regular chaos druids. Uh, but apparently less than aberrant specters. And actually at the end here, there's going to be potentially a new boss called Sarachnus. Sarachnus is a brand new mid-level boss unlocked by handing in all three completed tattered tomes to the Arceus library. I'm assuming you just have to do that once. It's kind of aimed at players around the 100 combat range for them to kind of try their hand at bossing. So Rachnus will drop a unique item, the giant egg sack. This can be cut open for a large number of red spider eggs Currently, these are normally dropped from Nightmare Zone or the Tower of Life, so having a new spider boss seemed more fitting. This is intended to make up for removing red spider eggs from the Nightmare Zone reward shop. For mid-level players, we expect the gold per hour rate to be competitive with Barrows, so potentially up to a mil an hour from this boss. It will be instanced with a reclaim fee of 50,000. I kind of don't know if I want more instance bosses. I feel like this could have just been a regular boss, but eh, whatever. And finally, you'll be able to kill this on a spider task, which is a very common task to get. So pretty much you'll always want to do it on task. Anyway guys, that is it for content updates, poll blogs, whatnot. Quite a lot of information. I'm really excited for the Forthos dungeon. I hope most of it passes. It probably will because it's a Slayer boss. Let's be real here. So this week, there was no Runelite update. So sad, but whatever, you guys deserve a break. Now speaking of Runelite, a few people have been talking about or mentioning Runelite Plus. And as far as I'm aware, they are not affiliated with Runelite at all. Now it's been described to me as Runelite on steroids. Now I went over to their website and had a quick look. Now some of these are kind of benign, but some of them are also really a bit overpowered. And as far as I can remember, a few of these are actually originally Runelite plugins or versions of them that they actually had to discontinue from the main Runelite build as Jagex wanted them removed or they were deemed too overpowered. A good example of this is the Zolra Helper plugin, but I noticed they also have a Vorkath Helper, a Vedion Helper, Whale Watcher. The hell is that? Some of these I think are just good ideas that haven't quite been added to Runelite yet, but some of these look like they could be a bit overpowered, like Prey Against Player. Eh, stuff like Flinch Timers aren't too strong, but they have a Hydra Helper, something for the Fight Caves, a eh, Safe Spot Indicator, like a few of these are towing the line for sure. In my opinion, I think you could definitely get banned for using some of these plugins. You probably won't, but I personally would avoid it. That's my opinion on it anyway. I do appreciate the work that's gone into this, and I'm not knocking at the developers in any way. It just seems like you're going to be towing the line the entire time and worrying about your accounts. I don't know if it's going to be worth it for this one, unless Jagex actually makes a stance on it. This week, the Oblivion clan leader by the name of Classics got his account permanently banned for real-world trading. Another one that made me laugh here was a Reddit user by the name of Bucky640 said he finally got his contest prize from 2012. Now I don't think this was the original contest prize. I think it was a contest for RS3, but some of the moderators from Old School Runescape sent him a signed copy of an Inferno mouse mat or poster or something like that. Now if only we could get it to the rest of our contest winners. And of course this week there was a player moderator that apparently had his uh, PMOD status revoked for calling out Jagex on their terrible customer service. Now there's always two sides to every story, but if this is true, that is a little unfortunate. I feel like there are not even close to enough player moderators in the game, and it's pretty unfortunate taking someone's PMOD status away in this fashion. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for the weekly recap. It's been a little quiet on the update front for a little while. Hopefully next week we'll get a Runelite update, uh, Q&A or something, because man, I am working hard to get this video to 10 minutes. Anyway guys, that's going to be pretty much it for the weekly recap. So in about two weeks, I'm going to be moving to a new apartment. I'm really excited. And at that time, I'm going to be doing YouTube full time. So after June 22nd, I will be doing this full time. So I'll have a lot more time to work on videos. Something I'm really excited for is I would like to stream more often. I have around 40 hours of monk killing ahead of me for my guild only account. So I kind of would like to stream that. It would make it a little bit more fun for me and... Now, why not? If I'm already doing it, might as well stream it, right? So what do you guys think? Would you be interested in watching a stream of the guild-only account? Or if not, a few other options I have here is working on my 1GP to 
Twist and Bow series. I have a bit of mixed feelings about uh, flipping on stream, but I could give it a shot. Or it could be something else entirely. Let me know what you guys think down below. Anyway guys, that's going to be it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.